over all of those, uh, the folks watching. Pray your home is COVID free. Amen. And I uh, hope you're coping with COVID well. I, I told them in the early service that I, I didn't get COVID 19, but I got COVID 10. Y'all know what the COVID 10 is, right? That's the 10 pounds you put on because you're just sitting around quarantined. <laughs> I got the COVID 10. But don't you worry, I'm on a light diet. I eat when it's daylight. I eat when it's sunlight, when it's moonlight. I've been known to eat by nightlight. Amen. I'm, I'm on a light diet. <laughs> if you have your Bibles this morning, you don't have to turn there, but I just want to read a portion of Scripture out of Psalm 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, with everything that is within me. Bless His holy name. And don't forget His benefits. How He saved you. How He healed you. How He redeemed you. How He crowned you. How He satisfied you. Man, that's a good God. Isn't it? And I think sometimes, especially during times like this, we forget about the benefits of the Lord. We get our minds on the negative instead of the positive. But I want to encourage you as we begin this morning, the Lord said when you come into the house, you need to enter into His courts with praise. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Amen. And bless His name. The psalmist said His praise will continually be in my mouth. So right now, why don't you get on your feet all over the house and let's just begin this with worship and praise this morning. Come on, give God praise in the house. Lord, we worship You today. We praise You. We exalt and lift up Your name. We will not forget your benefits. We will not forget how you've saved us. We will not forget how you've healed us. We will not forget how you've redeemed us, how you've crowned us, how you've satisfied us. Hallelujah. How you've blessed us. Lord, we praise your holy name. We bless your name today. And we exalt you in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. You continue in worship with the praise and worship team as they come. Give him some praise. Give him some praise this morning. God, we magnify you, Lord. Lord, we worship you, Jesus.
Cause the God of the mountain Yes He's the God of the valley Come on, sing And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Nothing. 
So they're going to the bottle and they're going to the pill and to whatever they can they can find to try to find the, the the replacement for the peace that comes from God. He turns he turns all my shame into glory. See the way the world deals with that is they just try to force you to accept them. Well, you have to accept me with the way I am. But the way God deals with that says, such were some of you, but you have been sanctified, you have been justified, you have been glorified. Come on. And so we've got God. We have the real thing. We have the real peace, the real joy, the real love. They think sex is love, but we know what real love is. We get it. I just thank God that that's been revealed to us. I just wish the world could know there's nothing like you. There is nothing like Him. Come on, anybody agree there is nothing like God? Nothing like God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, just give Him a praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Amazing song. Well, hallelujah. Well, before you sit down, turn and smile at someone and tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. Of course, if you're wearing a mask, it doesn't matter if you smile or not. So, <laughs> just let somebody know you're glad to see them. Hallelujah. 
What a wonderful anointing been in this building today through the nine o'clock service and into this 11 o'clock service. Just thank God for what he's doing. I had a lot of people with illnesses and sicknesses and we just want to keep them and remember them in prayer and uh, a lot of things going on. But I'm just glad you're here. Glad you're here by Facebook and live stream. If, you, if you're not able to be here in person, well, that's the next best thing. But boy, there ain't nothing like being here with my family. Amen. I love being here with my family. You know, I've got, all, I've got about 12, 1,200 pictures on my phone, and about 1,100 of them are grandchildren. But they, there's just not anything like being with them. Amen. So uh, there's nothing like being with you and getting to be in your presence. So we appreciate you being here today. Um, I've got a few announcements. Uh, If, you, if you'd like to, to wear a mask and you don't have one, we have some available. If you'll ask somebody at the Welcome Center, the ushers will get you a mask. Um, you know, we just want to be safe. Somebody said, well, I, I just, I don't, you know, I got faith. I don't need a mask. Do you take your medicine? Oh, well, anyway, um, do you go to the doctor if you're sick? Sometimes you just got to do your part and God will do what you can't do. But anyway, we're just, just saying. Uh, I, I agree with you. I hate those things. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want to make anybody else sick. And so, anyway, just keep those things in mind. And uh, a lot of stuff, good stuff going on. Glad you're here. We have any visitors? If you raise your hand, we want to give you a visitor's packet. Anybody, any visitors in the house today? All home folks? I didn't say homely folks. I said, oh, good, good to have you. Turn that visitor's card in at the Welcome Home Center. We have a gift for you. And anybody else? Oh, good to have you. Yeah. All righty. Has God blessed anybody in the house? I told you last week, we are, we, by, the, by the end of January 2021, we're believing God that Word of Life is going to be debt-free with our mortgage. We're going to see God do it. Now, God could send somebody in here to write us a check tomorrow, and you would miss a blessing. He wants to bless you to be a blessing. Amen? How many people are a blessing in the house? Amen? So many times we want to be blessed, but I want to be a blessing. Because if I'm a blessing, that means I'm already blessed. So, and, and I've shared with you this before, but that's the difference in a blessing and favor. How many people have the favor of God on your life? Oh, come on now. How many got the favor of God on your life? A blessing is when somebody walks up and hands me a $100 bill. That's a blessing. But when I have favors, when they hand me their debit card and give me the PIN number. God isn't just blessing me. He's giving me favor. I'm a child of the King. Amen. Go ahead and stand up on your feet. Come on, ushers. Let's get ready to receive today's offering. I want to walk in the favor of God oh come on hold your offering up this is my offering I'm giving to God I'm expecting I'm believing when I sow I will reap when I give I will receive and running over to be a blessing if you believe it shout yes All right, bring your offering and social distance as best you can you know that means maybe count to three
Hallelujah. What is God to you? You know, Jesus asked Peter, he said, who do men say that I am? He said, well, some say you're Elias, some say you're John the Baptist, some say, that, but who do you say that I am? All, all about this service this week, God has just been speaking to my heart. He said, don't let the world define me. Don't let the world define me to you. Who am I to you? What is God to you? He's, he's whatever we need. When, when, he, when He rained down the manna on the children of Israel, that he, he said, I am that I am, and they call it manna. Manna, it is. I am that I am. What is God to you? He's not the substitute. He's the thing that you need in your life. He's not, the, he's not the companion till the companion comes along. He's the companion. What is God to you? Don't let the world define what God is. Because they've got some warped ideas about things. Let's go by what the Word of God said God is. Amen? Come on, give Him a shout of praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you, praise team and band and everybody. This awesome job. I want to go back to proving strong the weapons of our warfare and I'm gonna to try to get in a couple of more weapons but there's one that I, like I shared God just been burning my spirit about back to 2nd Corinthians 10 and 3 though we live in the body we do not wage war in an unspiritual way I like the Holman Christian Standard Bible it it just lays it out there pretty good too I don't just use one particular version. I like to study out of a lot of them. I love to read this one the way it flows. Though we live in a body, we do not wage war in an unspiritual way. Since the weapons of our warfare, somebody say warfare. warfare. And you wonder why you're having a hard time. The weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but are powerful through God, through God for the de demolition of strongholds we demolish arguments and every high-minded thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, taking every thought captive to obey Christ. Last week we talked about how young David walked out and stood against the giant Goliath. A young man who was in his teens going against a warrior, a lifelong warrior, would have been a big enough feat, a big enough challenge but he was a giant who was a warrior all of his life that we talked about how David walked out and stood against him and won and what a great victory it was and how David didn't use conventional weapons we talked last week about how Saul said here take my armor and go out and fa face Goliath and when David started out in Saul's armor he said I have not yet proven these things or I haven't proven these weapons but I do have something I have used I've got my slingshot and my five smooth stones these things I know I can whip and I'm afraid what the enemy is trying to do is get the, the church to fight with worldly weapons He's getting us, he's trying to get us to forsake the weapons that have proven successful for the last 2,000 years for shiny, pretty new toys like Saul's armor. And if we're not careful, we'll lay aside what works for what looks good. If we're not careful, we'll lay aside what has worked because it's not as impressive as what the world has and we'll take on the world's armor the devil doesn't care where you stand on any given subject as long as you stand or as long as you fight with the wrong weapons stand for what you want to stand for just if you fight with the wrong weapons, you're still going to lose. And David, he discovered that on his way down to face Goliath. So he took those things off. He got his slingshot, his shepherd's bag, and five smooth stones. He said, I'll show you how to fight with what I know works. And we talked about that. I, I, I'm reminded of the story about my, my grandfather. My grandfather was saved later in his life. And I remember my dad told him, you know, you have to read your Bible. 
And so we came back from Oklahoma to visit. He said, Dad, you've been reading your Bible? And my grandfather said, well, I've been trying to read it. But he said, all they do in there is fight and beget. He said, I, everything, that, and my dad told him, said, well, you might want to start reading over in maybe Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's not as much fighting and a lot less begetting. Of course, if you're going to Matthew, maybe not. But anyway, but if you ever wondered why the Bible talks so much about battles, I mean, all in the Old Testament, all through the Old Testament, this one's fighting that one, and this one's fighting this one, and they're taking victory, and they're doing this and they're doing that. Can I tell you, that's not something that we can just overlook or jump because it's old hat or old school. The reason why the Bible talks so much about battles is because you and I live in so many battles. The li life is a battle. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. Life can be a battle. Life is often a battle. And so the reason the, the Bible makes reference to battles and struggles so much is because life, especially as a Christian, is a, is a battle and a struggle. And so God is telling us, if we look into the Word of God and study to show ourselves approved, and that's what Pastor Philip in the 9 o'clock service is talking about going back and preaching the Word and getting back in the Word and talking about the Word. If we get back in the Word of God and, and study it enough, we realize that there are answers in here. You know, don't forsake the answer. There are answers in the Word of God if we study into these things. And, and that's what I was taking from last week about David and Goliath. It's full of stories about fighting because we are fighting. And I get amazed at what people will fight for. You said you felt like America was worth fighting for. I get amazed at what people will fight for. They will shoot you over a parking place and let the devil have their children. You Black Friday. They'll fight you over a TV set. I've, I've never been out on Black Friday, but I've seen the, the videos. People will fight over some of the silliest things and will lay down and play dead over some of the most serious things. Yes, I believe America's worth fighting for. And I believe, I believe, I don't believe it's a perfect thing. I found out something about perfect things. Things can be perfect until people get involved. And when people get involved, perfection is out the window because people are not perfect. But, but I believe it's worth fighting. My family is worth fighting for. My health is worth fighting for. I'm not going to just take whatever they say and, and lay down and roll over and play dead. I, it's worth fighting for. Come on. My marriage is worth fighting for. My grandchildren are worth fighting. A good world where my grandchildren can grow up and hear the word of God. And know what, I, I was telling somebody the other day, I feel sorry for the, the youth and the children coming up in the world today. Those that, because they're not going to know some of the things that you and I enjoy because of, of the way the direction is going. But you know what? It's worth fighting for. My God is worth fighting for. David didn't go down against Goliath because he hurt David's feelings. David said, how, how dare you blaspheme my God? How dare you blaspheme God's people? You know what? God's church is worth fighting for. You, as far as I'm concerned, are worth fighting for. I fight for you. I pray for you. This morning, I, I, when I, about, I guess they know I'm an early riser. And before 6 o'clock this morning, one of my pastor friends was sending me a text message, praying for you, brother. I had you on my mind. He was fighting for me. You know, God will bring people to your mind and your heart. You need to fight for them. You need to pray for them. They may be in a place they can't fight. David wasn't fighting for David. He could have turned around. He just went down there to deliver some snacks to his brothers and wound up in the fight for his life. Sometimes your fight comes for the least place you suspected it to come from. At the least time. It seems like the devil knows when to hit us with a fight, don't he? So, if we're going to win, we've got to become skilled in our weapons and not try to be somebody else. Man, I read about the great forefathers. I... I, 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 I I love to hear Bill Wilson teach. I love to hear some of these other great ministers of the gospel teach. I love to, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, I love to hear his stories. Man, alive. It's just about like Bible stories. I love to read some of these people who've gone before, but I can't be them. I can't be Smith Wigglesworth. Can you imagine, Brother Mark, can you imagine being, bringing somebody up with a tumor and punching them in the stomach? And say, okay, now you're healed. Can you imagine the lawsuit? 
He punched the guy in the stomach. Jerry, you healed. The guy died. You know what Smith did? He said, take him out and let him out back. He'll be okay in a little bit. A little bit, the guy comes staggering back into the meeting, healed. I can't be that. And sometimes I think we try to be other people like, like Saul wanted David to impersonate him. You know what? I have to use my weapons. I may not be a singer. I have to use my weapons. I may not be the, 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 the keyboardist. I may not be the musician, but I, I can preach. You may not be the preacher, but there's something. You make them bake cakes. Bless God, bake a cake. Chocolate chip cookies. Ooh, glory to God. Use the weapons God's given you. But I want to talk a little bit more about that in James 1 and 19. Dearly beloved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be quick to hear. I don't know why this keeps coming up in, 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 in my teaching, but keep be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For a man's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourself. I went ahead and brought verse 22 into that. Be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself. Because here's the problem. What the enemy wants you to do is to respond emotionally. How dare you, how dare you say that about me? How dare you think that about me? How dare you have that idea? I know you didn't say it, but I can just tell what you were thinking. You can't even tell what you're thinking. You know what I say about giving people a piece of your mind? You're running out of pieces. It's time to quit. <laughs> but, but we get emotional. The, the anger of man does not the righteousness of God produce. And so the enemy wants you to get mad and get all emotional and get all upset and, get all, and, and, and fight with those weapons and not a fight with the weapons that God has given us. The anger of man... And the emotions of man, well, you know, here's, here's where we are today. That made me feel bad. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I went through a lot of school. I went through kindergarten through 12th grade. I went through Bible college. I went through a lot of school. And I don't know, but when I was in school, Pastor Philip, now you were a little bit behind, a little bit behind me. A little bit behind me when I started anyway. And, and, uh. I never had a teacher worried about how she made me feel. That teacher that told me, you wouldn't get this if I drilled a hole in your head and put the book in it. She wasn't worried about how I felt. Now, maybe she was a little bit on the other side. But I'm going to tell you what. We're just getting ridiculous with having to tiptoe around because people are getting their feelings hurt because I wore a black shirt on Tuesday. So what do we do? We make a rule. No black shirts on Tuesday because that hurts Sam's feelings. So let Sam, say, let Sam stay home on Tuesday. But, we, but people just, they're just flying by their feelings. You can't fly by your feelings because you'll feel one day on Monday and one way on Tuesday. And, and, and emotions, your emotions will tell you all kind of crazy stuff. We can't fly by our feelings. Can I tell you, God has hurt my feelings. If he hadn't hurt your feelings, you don't pray much. I tell you one time, I, was, I, was, I said, oh, God, God, I, I'm, I'm just doing my best to be a good Christian. I just want to be a blessing. I just want to be a blessing, Lord. Just make me a blessing. And, and here they are saying these things about me and doing this about me and going behind my back. And, Lord, and God said, why don't you grow up? The devil wanted to kill you, and all he could do is hurt your feelings. He wanted to take you out, but all he could do was stand outside the hedge I have around you and shout things over the hedge at you and whisper things over the head at you. All he could do was at a distance say things to you, and all he could do, he wanted to kill you, but all he could do was hurt your feelings. You ought to be praising me instead of whining to me. And I said, well, thank you, Lord. I got my feelings hurt. The devil wanted to kill me, and all it did was hurt my feelings. I have a different attitude about it now. The feelings of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Let's get back in this. Last week we talked about the weapons of our warfare. I told you number one weapon is prayer. Somebody say pray. My God, if we would pray instead of email. If we would pray as much as we text. 
something bothers you before you get on email and before you get on text or Facebook or offer up or chat or whatever you chat up do, before you get on there, you might need to hit your knees and say, God, pray. Somebody shout, pray. St. Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And so we've got to get back to praying. The church knows how to do all kind of stuff. Man, we can do stuff on screens and do stuff with lights and do stuff with this and that and the other, but we don't pray like we need to pray. Jesus said, my father's house shall be called a house of That's what he said, a house of prayer. Before we pick up the picket sign, let's hit our knees and talk to God. Before we go to the polling booth, let's hit our knees and talk to God. Before we draw up the lines and battle, go to battle with our lips, let's hit our knees and go to battle with God because we've got to learn to pray. I saw a thing yesterday where someone was saying, well, now, you know, the New Testament gifts and things of the New Testament, those things passed away with the completion of the Word. and There's no need for prophecy and no need for these things anymore since we have the Word. Then why pray? If, if, if there's no more healing, why are we praying? If there's no more deliverances from devils and casting out devils, why are we praying? I don't believe that poppycock. And it shall be for you and your children and your children's children. And it says, many as are far off. And in the last days, saith the Lord, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your young men will dream dreams. And your, and your old men shall prophesy, can I tell you? Or your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will prophesy, can I tell you? God is still God. Amen. We got to pray. The second thing I talked about last week. Now, this is just a re- review. This praise. Enter into his gates, Psalms 100. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. We've got, to, we've got to be free in our praise. The enemy, you know how the enemy does. You fight all the way to church because you couldn't find but one sock. Junior lost his shoes. Well, where were they at? I don't know. They were just right here. The devil came and got them on Saturday night. You come in the door, I tell you, I don't know why I married you. My mama told me I shouldn't marry you. And glory to his name. <laughs> Devil's trying to stop your praise. I know people, they never get sick till Saturday night and Sunday morning. They don't ever have problems. The enemy's trying to stop your praise. He's trying to get your mind on who's sitting over there and who's over there. Instead of, we've got we to we gotta enter in his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Somebody shout, praise the Lord. That's, see, when I was growing up, when I was a boy, I grew up an old-time Pentecostal. And people just said, well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, they walk in. How you doing, brother? Well, praise the Lord. I'm doing good. You know what? It don't need to be just a byword. It needs to be a, a, a theme of our life. Well, praise the Lord. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. I wouldn't have what I have if it wasn't for God. We've got to learn to praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Because God is a verbal God. Talking about prayer and talking about praise. He's a verbal God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God in the beginning. God is a verbal God. God didn't touch anything. He said, let there be light and there was light. Let there be stars and there were stars. He's a verbal God. God does more with a Word than we can do with our whole life. And so God is a verbal God. So you might not understand. I shared this years ago, but it's still powerful. God knows how you feel, but he wants to experience your worship and your praise. I know my wife loves me. I have no doubt my wife loves me, but buddy, when she comes in and puts her arms around me and looks up into my, fa- up into my face with them big blue eyes and says she loves me, I'll fight an army. And God knows how your heart is. But when you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise, he'll beat all of hell and five devils for you. He wants to experience 
your love. He wants to experience your worship. So even though he knows everything, he knows everything, he still wants to experience your willingness to come in and you don't care who's on the right or who's on the left, who's in front, who's got on a mask or who's what. You don't care. You just want to come into his gates and give him worship and give him praise and give him glory. God wants to experience your praise. That's your weapon. Talked last week about the power of the Spirit. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Pastor Philip was, again, in the early service talking about some of the mega churches. You know, there's a lot of those, they deny access of the Spirit to move in their midst. They do, they do behavior modification. And the Holy Spirit is a, a, a set free. I like going to a church where if the Spirit gets on you, you want to get up and dance, you get up and dance. I like, I like being in town. You better make sure it's the Spirit because some of them spirits need to be cast out. But I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of God moves on you, I like, to, I like a church where, where you come in and, 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 and the Spirit of God is free to move. Man, like our worship today, just getting into worship and praising the Lord because we, we have the power of the Holy Spirit moving. And I got to hurry up. And in the name of Jesus, Mark 16 and 17. And these signs shall accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. I'm so sick of some of the spirits that are set loose on the earth today. And some of you know, some of you, your, your family is suffering from these spirits that have been set loose on the earth today. And I just say, and, 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 but Jesus said, in my name, you're going to drive them out. You need to start saying, in the name of Jesus, you're not going to take my family. In the name of Jesus, you're not going to take my blood. In the name of Jesus, you're not going to, come, you're not going to do that. He said, in my, in my name, you will drive out demons. They will speak with new languages. Boy, we need that. In the name of Jesus, I come against that negative spirit. Some of us need to learn a different language, and it ain't Spanish. It's positiveness. They will speak with new languages. They'll pick up snakes. That's Pastor Philip's anointing, not mine. <laughs> if they should drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. That's for the newlyweds. <laughs> they will lay hands on the sick, and they will get well. Well, Pastor, if you believe in divine healing, you know, I believe in divine healing, but we, you know, you got to come up and get hands laid on you to have it happen. So the Spirit of the Lord is our weapon that the enemy cannot do anything with. But this is the one the Lord laid on my heart today, a new one for this week. Romans 12 and 1, some of my favorite scripture. Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. See, the reason why some people can't get into worship on Sunday morning is because they haven't been living the life Monday through Saturday. I can't, I can't live for the devil six days a week and come in on Sunday. <clears throat> anyway, um, do not be conformed to this age, world, age, time, but be transformed by renewing of your mind so that you discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. There's a lot of talk about the power of the mind. The power of the mind. If you don't think you can do something, you're never going to do it. If you convince yourself, many of our battles are lost before they ever happen. They're lost in our mind. I found, I found this awesome show. I'm not, I'm not big on TV watching, but I found this awesome show called Alone. Anybody ever seen Alone? Oh, okay. They take 10 people and they set them out in de deserted areas all by themselves, and they leave them. And the last person to tap out or call in and say, come and get me, gets $500,000. Well, I'm not going to participate in this because about two days, and I say, bring my little blue-eyed woman to me or take me to her, I'm done. But they had, they had people stay two or three months all by themselves. They, have to, they, have, they get to take ten things with them, and, 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 and they have to live 
have to build their shelter, have to do every, catch their food, have to do everything, and the last of the ten to leave gets $500,000. And, and, and I found this, this thing, but, but one thing they're saying, they get out there, they said, you have to control what you think, because if you get to thinking about home and about all the stuff you've given up, you won't be out there a day. So you have to control the way you think. Can I tell you something? In Christianity, you've got to get control over what you think. If you don't think you can live the life and you don't think you can do it and you don't think God can do it, you're not going to get very far. But you've got to be like David last week. You've got to say, this giant, I beat the bear and I beat the lion. This giant is nothing to me. You've got to walk in the battle saying, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You've got to transform your thinking. Now, I know, and I know, he said, to, to prove what is the good, perfect, acceptable will of God. I know, number one, we can't let the world, he said, don't be conformed to this world, this age. And man, it in the, it in the world trying to manipulate our thoughts. You are intolerant. But say anything about Jesus, and they'll, they will censor you. You are intolerant. You are this and you are that and you are the other if you don't think the way they want you to think. But they, they are completely intolerant to anyone with a different opinion. And they try to conform our way of thinking and try to pressure our way of thinking into accepting what they want us to accept. Be not conformed to this age. Be, don't let the world, the church, Pastor Philip was preaching it this morning. The church should not let the world or Washington or Hollywood tell us what, what we think or what our morals are or what our doctrine is. We can't let the world conform us into their pattern. But it's happening. It's happening. We got, we got churches and we've got ministries that are abandoning the word of God for public opinion. That's not the way it ought to be. Do not be conformed to this world's way of thinking. Heaven is high, hell is hot. And so he said, don't be conformed to this world. But we see how the enemy plays mind games. Remember, when, they, when Goliath would go out, he would dress for battle, and all his battle array would walk up there and start cursing God and making fun of God, making fun of all those soldiers, playing mind games. And, and the devil is playing mind games with some of us. No, no, no. He's playing mind games with all of us. Well, you can never be like that, and your, your prayers will never be answered, and God's not going to hear you, and you lived that thing, and you did that, and you did this. And so he's playing mind games with us. And when, with, with Goliath's mind games, the entire army stood frozen, dressed for battle, but frozen. Dressed for battle, but inactive. Much like a lot of churches on Sunday morning. Dressed for battle. But no battle. Arrayed in all the armor. They've got the music. They've got the screens and the lights and the, all the things. That, that they look like they know what they're doing, but no one is heeding the call of Goliath. Until a young man walked out and said, I don't need the trappings of this world. I have weapons that I know works. But the enemy is playing mind games with you. He's trying to tell you why you can't do it, why you shouldn't do it, why you're not going to be successful. The devil's a liar. The weapons of our warfare are mighty through God. No, you can't do it without God. But once you give it to God, you can do anything. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. You can't do it alone. You can't walk away from the bottle by yourself. You can't walk away from the pill by yourself. You can't walk away from the relationship by yourself. But through God, our weapons are mighty. Through God. So we can't allow. That's it. We've got to believe it. We can't allow Hollywood and Washington to dictate our morals. He said you have to renew your mind. You have to get in the word of God. And this is what God was, was asking me. Where are you getting your concept of me? I know we're in the world and, and we're the, the, the news media and the TV and movies, all these things that are influencing our life. And God said, where are you getting your concept of me? Who do men say that I am? Well, who do you say that I am? Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but the Father who is in heaven. God, I don't want the world's concept of you. 
Because the world has concept of you is everything from you don't exist to you're some Santa Claus just waiting to give me whatever I want and it don't matter what I do. I don't want the world's concept of you. I want the Father in heaven to give me a revelation of who you really are. Who do you say that I am, he said. Be transformed in your thinking. I don't have to accept what the world says about things. I can be transformed in my thinking. My God is a miracle working God. They asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast it out? He said, because of your little faith, uh, Matthew 17 and 20. Because of your little faith, he told them, for I assure you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you'll tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. God said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get the, the thought in your mind that nothing can be impossible to you. Amen. Nothing will be impossible to you. The enemy is trying to make you think it's impossible. But with man, it may be impossible. With God, all things are possible. Who do you say that I am? Lord, transform my thinking. Come on, ask him that right. Lord, transform my thinking. Transform my mind. Lord, let me get an idea of how big my God really is. My God who stretched out the heavens and measured them with the span of his hand. Millions upon millions of miles, and he measured them with the span of his hand. Lord, let me get an idea of how big my God is. That three days before there was a sun, he said, let there be light. And the light, the sky lit up with light because he said so. Let me get an idea of how big my God is who raised raised up the bones and made a mighty army. Let me get an idea of how big my God is. Lord, let my my idea of you, let my concept of you, let my imagination of you be like you and your word give me and not the world. Transform your mind. Kayla, I want you to come up and get ready to sing that new song y'all sang again. I like that. I want to hear that one again for our altar call. This morning, my word is this. I want you to transform. I want you to ask God to transform your thinking. I had some more, but I'm not going to get there today. Lord, transform my thinking. Lord, let me, let me, let me start thinking nothing is impossible. Lord, let me start thinking that if I ask and have faith as a mustard seed, I'm going to see it happen. Lord, let me start. You know what? We would pray more if we realize how powerful prayer really is. You have not because you ask not. Ask that your joy may be full. Come on. Lord, Lord come, get, go ahead, get up on your feet with me. Come on. For God, I ask you to transform my thinking this morning. I want to leave here with a new mindset and a new attitude. I want to leave here with a new attitude toward you today, Lord. Transform my thinking. Greater is he that is in me. Come on, somebody say that. Greater is he that is in me. Woo, hallelujah, yeah. I can do all things through Christ. Somebody say that. I can do all things. Nothing is impossible. Say to the mountain, be moved. Some of us today are facing some mountains. And we're feeling overwhelmed. We're feeling too small and too inadequate facing some mountain. Say to that mountain right now, you got to get out of my way in the name of Jesus. You got to get out of my way in the name of Jesus. It may be a health problem. It may be a business or a financial problem, whatever it is. You need to say to it right now, in the name of Jesus, mountain, you got to go. Come on, transform your thinking. Sickness, you got to go. Whatever the issue is the enemy is bringing against you, you got to go. Father God, transform our thinking. Lord, let us get our opinion of you from you and your word and not from this world. Let us get our idea of you and our opinion of you, our concept of you from divine. Woo, come on, somebody start praising him right now. How big our God really is how great prayer really is, how powerful it really is. My praise, Lord, I praise my way in today. I pray my way in today in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sing it, yeah. Come on, somebody needs to start praising him with his song. Somebody need to pick up the weapon of praise right now. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, no. Oh, there's nothing. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Come on, yeah. Woo. Better than you know there's nothing. Come on, come on, tell him, tell him. Woo! No, there's nothing. 
Somebody this morning is facing a mountain, facing a challenge, whatever you want to call it. There's something you're facing today, but you want to get a concept of how much greater God is than what you're fighting, what you're going through. Come down to the front, get in the aisle, and whatever you want to do, but get somewhere and let's sing this. And I want you to praise your way into victory today. I want you to praise your way into a place to see God bigger than what you thought He was, to change our concept of God to being big. Come on, right now, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whatever the enemy's fighting you with, you just get out in the aisle and give God some praise in His place. Get out in the aisle and give God some glory. Let's sing this. You're the only one who can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. You're the only one. Yeah, hallelujah. You turn praise into God. You turn both into God. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. You turn praise into God. You're the only one who gets. You turn praise into God. Yeah. You turn both. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things in store for those who call you their God. Lord, I just ask you to touch us today. God, give us a, a revelation of your greatness in every situation I face this week. Let me know that greater is he that is in me, O oh God. 
I come against fear. I come against depression and discouragement. And God, I just thank you because, God, you can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can even ask or even think. That is the God I serve. That is the God I serve. In Jesus' name, God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. Stay safe.